That's not going to work. Just trying to find a place where it looks good. Hi, I'm trying to find, I am visiting my sister and I'm trying to find a good place to do this. I, where I was sitting, the light was not good. So I'm trying to find a good place to be for you. All right, I left my label over there. Hi there. I've got a little dog here with me, I'm my sister. <laughs> and I don't know what Dexter thinks I'm talking to, hey? So I thought I would come on here. I'm not at home, so I can't, haven't got my setup to do uh, a tutorial like tabletop view. So I wanted to show people how to make a simple headband. So I've got my hook. Um, in the pattern, it says an N 9 millimeter hook, but my N hook that I have here with me, I'm away from home right now, is a 10 millimeter, and it'll be okay. It'll work, okay? So, um, and you need some scissors, and you need a needle. And I'm making it with Lion Brand Woolies Thick and Quick. And this is a super bulky six weight yarn. So I thought, you know what? I, I sat and I made this over at my daughter's. I'm visiting family right now. So I was at my daughter's last night. So I, I, I whipped up a, a little simple headband. And the pattern is free on my blog, but I don't have a video tutorial for it. So I thought, well, you know what? I can actually um, do... Um, I'm just hoping the chat is working, that everybody, if you want to say hi in the chat, just say hi. I thought I can actually just make one live on here and show people what to do, because it's just as easy to do that as it is to make a tutorial. So um, this pattern, the simple uh, headband or ear warmer, is on my blog, and it's in three different sizes. So today, I'm this one is the medium. It's like a teen, small adult. And I thought I'm going to make a child size, small teen pattern for you, um, headband for you today. And uh, say hi if you want to in the chat. That would be great. And um, this is only my second live, so I'm just getting yeah. used to how everything works. So I'm going to make a slip knot. I wrap it around my finger twice. I lift the yarn over. And then over again, so I've got my finger poking through, and that's how I make a slip knot. Okay, I do have a beginner um, episode one crochet video tutorial that shows you how to make a slip knot, shows you how to chain, and all those things. Hi from the Netherlands, that's so nice to see you. I'm in Canada. I'm um, right now. I'm on the in the Fraser Valley. I came over from my island to the mainland to visit family and I'm out in Harrison Hot Springs which is right on Harrison Lake and it's very beautiful. I'm at my sister's apartment right now. And Montreal, hi there. So I'm showing people how to make uh, a simple headband today. So I've just made a slip knot and I'm going to now chain 34. So I've got one, I'm gonna count for a minute. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And I do it nice and loose because if you don't, you might find yourself having a really sort of tight edge to the headband and then it gets looser as it goes up. Okay, so I think that was 13. 14, 15, nice loose chains. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. And I'm going to count because I did stop and have a conversation in the middle of that. So I might have made a mistake. So, yes, I hope you guys um, enjoy this little live. I'm just showing how to make a headband 
I'm as I'm visiting at my sister's. I did explain earlier. I can't uh, do like I haven't got the tripod and everything for doing a head down on the table tutorial. So two, four, six, eight, ten. 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 31, 32, 33. I think I need one more to make 34. Okay. So then what you're going to do is without twisting this um, chain, you're going to join the two ends together and put your hook into the first one that you made and put the yarn over your hook and pull it through to make a slip stitch and then you chain one and this is what we have a little ring i am left-handed yes <laughs> that was the topic of my last um that video uh live that i did um night night from the uk yes i have family in the uk i know it's getting late over there thanks Anne. um and uh, I, all of my videos, therefore, are left and right videos. I do left and right versions of all of the tutorials that I have. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I've chained one, and I'm just going to actually single crochet into each of these chains. That single crochet, you just stick it in to the chain, yarn over, pull it up, and then yarn over and through the two. It's kind of an odd angle here to let you see me working and see my face. This is my second live and it's wonderful that we've got five people here so this is really cool. And what surprised me about my last live was I think we had about six people in total but since the live was posted 130 people have watched it so this being a tutorial kind of live, this is a bit different. Maybe um, we'll get more people looking at this one. I'm just growing my YouTube channel. I have this pattern is free on my on my carawaycrochet.com blog. So if you go um, to the carawaycrochet.com and there's a little search box on the top right hand corner, you can just type in simple headband and you will see the free pattern written up on my blog. And it comes, like I said, in three sizes. So it's great to make as a Christmas present. You'll see how quickly it makes up, right? Um, it's quite an easy pattern, too, because for beginners, doing single crochet and half double crochet, those are the only stitches you need to know to make this headband. So if anybody has any questions, just write them into the comments. And... Um, I live on the west coast of Canada, and I know there's a lot of people from England on here. I used to live in England, up in Yorkshire, and then down in Norfolk. But right now I live on a little island, and it's nice to be over visiting family on the mainland, uh, out in the Fraser Valley. So well, here we go. I'm halfway around. Oh, I'm nearly finished the first round. You see how fast this goes? So when you get to the end, I'll show you this way, like this, you want to join to the top of where your first single, cro wait, single crochet was, where you chained one. Okay, so I'm going to turn around and I'm going to single crochet into the top of that first stitch and slip stitch it. Sorry, not single crochet. So it's slip stitch and it's joined. And that is a single crochet round. Okay. You're from Norfolk. Whereabouts? I used to live uh, in Kings Lynn and then in Down a Market. And then we moved to Upwell, which was technically in Cambridgeshire. Oh, yes. I know people who aren't left-handed. It's funny. My sister, who I'm staying with right now, is left-handed. My daughter, who I'm staying with in Mission, is left-handed, and my other daughter is left. Kings Lynn, you're from Kings Lynn? I used to live in Kings Lynn way back, like 1971. And I used to teach in Downham Market. And I also taught in East Winch, which isn't that far from Kings Lynn. 
when I moved to King's Lynn, um, I went straight from college to teach. And I had um, three other teacher friends that lived with me in a house on the Fairstead Estate. And uh, two other friends had an, a flat on the Fairstead Estate and one other was married and they had a flat on the Fairstead Estate. So that's such a small world, right? So the row two is another row of single crochet. So you literally just put your hook through the stitch, pull up your yarn and go through the two. So we're gonna work around in single crochet for row two, round two. We call it a round when we're, we're going round in a circle. And you're from Georgia, Stephanie. Yeah, I've never been to Georgia. My daughter lives down in Washington State, which is just over the border from British Columbia. So yeah, here we go, round two, single crochet. So this is our second row of single crochet. When I learned to crochet, I used to have to learn off of diagrams. There were no videos around when I first learned how to crochet. I don't know really how I did it when I think about it, but that might be why I hold my yarn kind of weird. I, I just hold it between my two fingers. I don't wrap it around anything for tension. This is just the way I did it. But as I say, I taught myself off of diagrams. So. There was nobody modeling how to do it for me. I just looked at these illustrations of hooks and yarn. Okay, so we're back. You can see where the string is, is where we started from, right? So we're back at the beginning. And we're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of the first row, a stitch of row two. Now I'm going to chain one, even though I'm doing half double crochet for this next round. I'm only going to chain up one. We want everything to be nice and tight and cozy. You crochet with your right because that's how your Nana taught you. I can understand that. I knit right-handed because when I was learning to knit, nobody even thought that maybe being left-handed, it might not be a good idea to learn how to knit right-handed. I was in brownies and I had a, a horrible time trying to learn how to knit. All the other kids were making baby booties and baby hats and I was trying to make a blooming pot holder out of super bulky yarn like this on big fat needles that my dad made me because I kept dropping stitches and nobody could figure out why I was having such a hard time learning how to knit and it's because I was being taught right-handed but um, that was how it was back in the day. Nobody considered that maybe you needed to learn differently if you were left-handed. So now I'm doing half double crochets for this third row round. Half double crochets, yarn over the hook, put it through your stitch, yarn over, pull it up, and you now have one, two, three loops, and you pull it through all three. So this is the third row, and it's all half double crochet, into each stitch as you go around. That's pretty easy. Well, I've got all left-handed um, tutorials on my channel, and I think more people are starting to do that now. And I have the right-handed ones because you can just flip the video now we've got all this technology and make it into a right-handed video. So there's no excuse really for people if they really wanted to have left-handed videos. They could just take their right-handed one and flip it. Because I've never had a single right-handed person say that there's an issue with my videos. You definitely have to post right-handed videos because the majority of people are right-handed. So yes, um, you might want to check out my videos and see if any of the left-handed ones are helpful for you at all.
so here I am at the end of round two. This is what it looks like. And this is the, the top of the chain one. And I'm just going to slip stitch into the top of chain that chain one. And then that pulls it all together and we've got that you can hardly see there's a join. So I'm going to chain one and I'm going to do another round of half double crochets. This is the middle part of the headband. See how fast it grows? Oh, that's so cool. You found me, did, were you just searching for left-handed videos or did you find me from my Instagram or from the shorts here? Maybe I should write that in as a hashtag on my shorts, left-handed crochet. Another one. Yes, I'm seven. I'm going to be 73 this week. I'm getting really old. That's why I'm over here visiting because my birthday is on Thursday. So all my kids, I can be with them. And uh, my daughter from Washington is coming up too from the States. It just coincided really well because she works um, remotely, but her company were having her up for a meeting this week. So it worked out really good. And I got to come over and see my sister because her birthday was in August, at the end of August, and mine is in September. So we always get together and kind of have a joint celebration whenever we can. So another row of half double crochet. And the other great thing is being on the mainland is that Michaels have 30% off their yarn this, this week. So when I get back to mission, I can go and check out Michaels and go and get, because all of this line brand thick and quick uh, is what I use for my hats and my short and chunky gloves and my headbands and for the market. And when I do have a couple of more markets and the Christmas markets coming up, those are the only times that I actually sell things. So, but I do have crochet kits that I put together. So I need to go get some Lion Brand while it's 3% off while I'm over here. So I'm at the last, oh, you just did a search for left-handed videos and I came up. That's good. <laughs> That's good. Good to hear that. So here we are. We've done two rows of single crochet, two rows of half double crochet. And now I'm going to do two rows of single crochet to balance it off at the end. Okay, so here we go. I chained one to start and I'm going around with the single crochet. This is oatmeal. Lion brand, oh no, this is marble gray, sorry. Lion brand have a lot of really nice neutrals. They have oatmeal, they have marble gray, they have a really nice fisherman, which is a ivory creamy color. They have some nice grays. I love their raisin, which is kind of a purpley um, one with little flecks of white. They have kale, which is a lovely green. And um, Merlot, which is a, like a burgundy. So maybe I'll do a video of what I buy when I go to Michael's. I'm going on Wednesday. So here we go. This is round one, two, this is round five. There's only six rounds to this headband. So here we go. Slip stitch into the top of the chain one and chain another one. And we're ready to go with the final round of single crochet. Oh, you were searching. I, I love it that people are actually finding 
me for the left-handed because I'm noticing I'm getting quite a lot of views on my left-handed videos, which is nice. When I first started, I did just left-handed and then I, I, I learned how to be able to flip them over to make them right-handed. And really, I think the last year I've been doing a bit more on my channel. I'm really trying to put some attention and focus into it now and, and build it up. Add regular videos. And that's why I'm kind of doing this live one because I'm away from my tripod and my setup. But I thought, you know, something like a, a headband is nice and easy to make on a live. Here we go. Last one. And join to the slip stitch with a slip stitch. And then I like to cut off a nice long tail just to weave in the ends. And then I get my, I think I have a needle here. Here it is. It's, it's handy because my sister works from home, too, so she's working in her office. So we can both be getting on with our stuff. So I take my yarn needle, and I usually go in and out of that top, the top bees there. I don't want it to be really obvious. It kind of just keeps things looking like it's just the regular top. And then I weave it back through. And then I tend to go down, in and out, down the seam, and then in and out, back up to the top. I like to go in about three different directions when you fasten off your ends. And from the scissors, that's that. So that's the top end woven in, and now at the bottom, I do the same. Hi there, Beth. Nice to see you again. This is my second one. You've been to both my lives. I'm making a headband here. I'm just finishing it off, actually. I'm just weaving in the ends. But that last um, live that I did with you, Beth, um, we've had over 100 views of the live since it's been posted, which is kind of funny. I didn't know people watch lives. So that's kind of nice. I'm learning a lot. There. And I can actually take these to the market. Uh -huh. I'm missing this Saturdays because I'm going to be over with my kids for my birthday, but I will be back on the next week, on the next month. So there we have a headband. Now this is the child's small, small teen, so it doesn't really fit me, right? But I wanted to make it it's this, that size. And you can see if I compare it, this is the child um, small teen one, and this is the the regular teen small adult one and this is the difference in the sizing and then the large adult will be that big again so i did make it into three sizes so you could actually you know make a mommy and me headband matching thank you yeah it's a just an easy uh headband now i'm out of yarn this is all I have left. I've made a couple out of there, and I've also made my short and chunky fingerless gloves with this yarn. So um, I don't know if you were here, Beth, when I said that Michael's has a 30% off yarn sale this week. Uh, so while I'm over on the mainland near the big stores, I'm going to go and uh, get myself some yarn while it's on sale. So I'll be getting all the colors and setting myself up for putting together my crochet kits because I I have crochet kits that come with a little uh, project bag that I sew, I hand sew at home and I chain 
um, the strand that goes through the top to gather it together, right? And I um, have a pattern that goes in there, a printed pattern. I have the yarn. I have the hook. I have the the um, yarn needle. And if it's a, um, a hat, a beanie with a pom-pom, I put a pom-pom in there. And I have a little uh, card with the links to the YouTube tutorials that they're going to need if they need the beginner tutorials or whatever tutorials they want. So it makes a really great um, Christmas gift idea. So I have to go home and madly make some project bags <laughs> and uh, get those listings on my Etsy shop. Yeah. Oh, you have five daughters. Wow. I have three and one son, but these, these are quick. You saw how quick that was. I don't know how long I've been going here. Um, if there's any indication on here that, oh, 25 minutes. So it probably takes you 20 minutes to make one of these. So that's not going to take you too long to make five. And it doesn't use a lot of your yarn. It's not like making a full beanie or something. But yeah, they look nice on. I'll, I can put this one on to show you what they look like. So they do cover your ears. They are, they could be ear warmers, you know. You could you put your ponytail through the back if you or messy bun or whatever. But they just, I think they fit really nicely. They're a nice size and they're quick to make. Just single crochets and half double crochets. And the other thing that I do with them sometimes is um, I, uh, I see my daughter's just messaging me. Kind of call me. You can actually wind yarn around like this and make it into like like the twisted ones. So it's more like um, what do they call it? Turban type of thing. So that's another thing you can do once you've made your beanie, or you can just have it straight round like this. And I do have um, uh, headbands with twists in them made with a finer yarn that actually do have the twists. I have those on my YouTube, on my um, blog as well. Yeah, for Christmas. Be kind. And the fingerless gloves that I have out of the same yarn, you could make a set, you could make a headband and then the short and chunky fingerless gloves, which is a tutorial here. There's left and right-handed tutorials for my short and chunky fingerless gloves. And that would really make a super present if you just had the gloves and the headband that match. I'm trying to think, Dion, were you from England or Georgia? Where were you from? Oh, Dion's from the Netherlands. Sorry. So, does anybody else have any questions? I don't really have enough yarn to make anything else. The other thing I'm working on right now is um, I did a I did a video asking people what garment I should make my next garment tutorial on, and um, the votes were overwhelmingly in favor of my color block cardigan. It's a crop cardigan, where one side is one color, the other side is another color, the back is a different color, and the sleeves are alternating with the, with the sides. And it's kind of a cute cardigan. So I've actually been busy filming how to make the ribbing, how to do the back, how to do the sides. So far, that's how far I am, and I've brought it over with me here. So I'm going to sew, um, do a video of sewing the the sides and the back, uh, the shoulders together, right? The back to the sides and the shoulders, leaving the armholes, and then showing how to do the sleeves. So that's kind of the other thing I'm working on while I'm away from home. It's kind of the first, I just got my studio set up with my YouTube center and my all of my yarn up in my one room upstairs and a nice chair and a, and a television set up so I can do everything up there. And it's only literally been up there for a couple of weeks. And now I'm away from home and I'm really missing it. <laughs> but 
it's nice to get away and visit family. My birthday with everybody. So, is anybody else doing any projects? What are you working on? Oh, there you go, Beth. So, um, I do have the Happy Hippie sweater, which um, somebody who just started crocheting in April actually just finished their Happy Hippie sweater, and they shared it on the crochet group I have over on Facebook. It's called Caraway Crochet Community. Also, if you go to my blog and are on there, you will see a sign up for um, the Caraway Crochet Community. Uh, oh, you saw it. Yeah. So if you wanted to make that, she said it was, uh, she had, she asked me a few questions and I'm always here to help, right? And, and uh, she made that. But I am working on this uh, cardigan. And then my next goal is to work on my super simple sweater. So you might want to wait for that one, which is just made in a neutral. All right. Yeah, well, on my Caraway Crochet community on Facebook, she posted a picture of it. So, yeah. And I will do the super simple sweater. That's going to be my next um, goal for a big pattern. Um, they take a while to do the, the large garment ones. So I will do a few short and sweet ones like this. I'll probably make a tutorial for this from the top because this might not have been an easy way for people to learn how to do it. But, um, yeah, I want to, I've got a few more um, mason jar cozies that I could do crochet tutorials for. Has anybody got any um, requests for what they'd like to see in the form of a crochet tutorial? Oh, pot holders. I have a pot holder um, pattern that I, I haven't made into a, uh, Tutorial. Maybe I, I should put that on my list. I do have dishcloths up here and I do have a hand towel um, tutorial uh, as a video tutorial. And I do have, oh, I don't know, if, is the tea cozy up here? I'm trying to think. Yeah. Um, I have a French press cozy like for a cafetiere. Um, that is a pattern on my blog that I also think I should make for YouTube. So I have a list a mile long of stuff I need to do. Yeah. What do you like making, Dion? Right. Yeah, well, mine are the, called the Practically Perfect Potholders. And they, I, they're made with two strands of cotton. I'm actually at my sister's and I did, we, we have a little shop that's not far away from her where I got some cotton before. A newborn sweater. I'm working on a layette for my second grandchild, great grandchild. Uh, I do have actually newborn hats. I could put that up. I've got preemie hats as well. And I have a baby blanket. Yeah, your second great grandchild, I can't imagine. I've got two grandchildren, but they're 16 and 14, so it's gonna be a while before I'm a great grandma. My, my daughter was born in January. Maybe I should do a newborn sweater pattern, you never know. I'm trying to actually be good and just work through the patterns I already have written. You're having a grandchild, Beth, or a great-grandchild? Do you know what, what you're having, Beth? I could put a baby blanket up. Oh, your daughter's birthday is January, right? She doesn't have any children. Neither does my daughter that's born in January. Uh, 
I haven't got into children's clothing yet because it's the grading of the sizing, right? And knowing all the different measurements for the different sizes. But I do know somebody that I, um, a crochet designer that I work with that um, does a lot for, of kids' designs. It's, uh, I think it's Blue Star Crochet. And um, she, I could put that in there. She has some children's sizes, I think. And, um, oh, and this person has amazing children's clothing, but they're more girls. I think she has a channel on YouTube. I can go on my phone and check. Uh, let's see. The more. She makes beautiful, um, there we go. Yes, she has a YouTube channel called The Mool Hole. M-O-U-L-E-H-O-L-E. -E. Did I put that up there? Did it not show up? Oh, there it is. Yeah, it shows up. <laughs> I couldn't see it. Anyway, she's on YouTube. Um, and let's see what she's got for videos. Lace stitch, bobble stitch, lots of stitches. Uh, Casey sweater. So she might have something. She's, it seems to be more bonnets. Oh, how to do sleeves. So anyway, you could check her out. And I think my, I don't know if Blue Star Crochet has a YouTube channel. I thought she had some children's designs. Yes, here she is, Blue Star Crochet and beanies and you'd have to check. You don't really want me scrolling all the time or watching this, but she has a lot of sweaters for adults. I don't see any left-handed tutorials, but uh, she, yeah, she has a lot of different videos on there, so you might want to check her out. Yes, see, the way I do my decreasing, I don't say left hand or right side. I just go at, at the end of this round and then go to the other side. So um, I'm not using the words left and right. So it always works out. Whatever your hand you're doing, it works out okay. So um, you have to watch how you give your instructions. So I, I'm very careful. I just say when you get to the end of this row, you turn and on row 14, you decrease here. Well, that's good. Yeah, pulling back. As a designer, that's what you do all the time because you're trying to make things work. And when people want size inclusive, so you have to make your designs for garments from extra small to 5X, that's a lot of math. <laughs> so, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, just have to be careful. And the other thing that I made the mistake of in the early days was I had a nice little opening, do, 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 musical thing with the title of the pattern in it at the beginning and then when I flipped it I realized it's backwards and you and it you can't do that so you can't really put any text into your video if you're doing left and right handed yeah
So if I make any mistakes, I can't put any any typed corrections onto my video because it'll be the wrong side for the right-handed person. It'll be bad. mirror writing. Okay, well, that's food for thought for me to think about maybe doing some children's patterns. I do have two cardigans and a sweater right now that need testing, and I want to get them up. And I'm also making some sleeves. Um, no, socks. No, I don't go to, I don't touch socks. Uh, I've made yoga socks. I designed a pair of yoga socks where there's a gap in the heel. But it's just such small yarn to be nice, you can, like I do, I have, um, that was the next tutorial I was going to work on when I get home, is my, I have slipper socks, but they're made out of this super chunky yarn, and they are made in three sizes, three or four sizes, I can't remember, and I have kids' slipper socks, so I have made some slipper socks um, patterns, they are on my blog currently, and it's my best-selling pattern on Etsy after the Happy Hippie Sweater. People love those slipper socks, but actually fine, really socks. Um, I, 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 and I don't even think I would knit any because they would take forever. I'm not patient enough to make a long-term project like that. It's like I'd really like to make something out of lighter yarn, like a garment, crocheting it. But it would just, for me, it would just take so long. I think there's something about my personality that... I, I crave um, things to get finished a little bit better. Yes, my sister, she makes beautiful socks. She is an amazing knitter. Um, and uh, she spins, she dyes her own yarn. She weaves beautiful, beautiful things out of her weaving. She actually weaves fabric that she then uses to make herself jackets and, and clothing. And she also spins really fine yarn that she can use and dye, make socks. She is incredible. She's in England. In England. And then my sister, who I'm staying with, she is a knitter and a crocheter, but she's just knit the most amazing blankets. And again, I'm not that great at blankets because it just takes so long to finish. But she just sits here and just makes these amazing blankets. I'm sitting here looking at one across on the other couch, and it's just beautiful, all lacy and pretty. I did a really special blanket, very lacy blanket for my first daughter when I was pregnant with my first daughter. And I can't believe it when I look at it that I actually ever really knit that from a pattern. There were no YouTube videos in those days. It just literally followed a pattern. And I still have it, still in my memory trunk. Yes, crochet is, I like crochet. I do knit, I knit hats. Um, I have a, about four different styles of hats that I'll knit for the winter market. I have actually designed a Fair Isle hat, but I don't know whether it's appropriate to put it on my crochet blog because it's so crochet dominant, you know. And I also have a really cool knit um, hat that I made as a custom order with fir trees on it. And it's sort of like a bonnet, but longer. Um, and then it had two big pom-poms on the top. And I really thought I should get that one written up and done. But that's another one on the back burner. Too many ideas. Like I used to paint and I was just sitting talking to my daughter because all my paintings are hanging up in my daughter's house. And so when I visit her, it's so nice to wander and, and, and look at all my paintings hanging up there. And she says, your problem, mom, is that you paint too fast. And so you have way too many paintings sitting around. I just, that's where I'm working right now in my uh, yarn studio. It's what used to be my art studio. And I've just moved all my paintings out into a, a, a big cupboard sort of nook area in, in what used to be my wool room. And I'm not letting myself go towards painting. I'm just focusing on crochet right now. Yeah, I think that's what we have, ADHD. Yeah, that's probably my thing, Dion. But we were never diagnosed. <laughs> we were just creative and crazy. 
ja. <laughs> they used to just say you were creative and sensitive, you know, we didn't have a designation. But I was doing my master's in arts and education and um, on the, there was one specific uh, course on aesthetics of art. And the, the professor was saying that back in the 1600s, 1700s, uh, people who were artistic were thought of to be mad. Crazy people. Oh, there you go. Yes, we are the right, we're all left-handed and we're all a little bit <laughs> crazy. <laughs> yeah. And I did read a book on left-handedness and it did say that a lot of people who are left-handed were very creative and um, a bit rebellious. They don't like to follow the rules. Strong-willed. <laughs> All of the above, exactly. Well, I'm so glad we found each other. We're a small, cohesive group, We're very like minded. Well, I'm probably going to let you guys go. My battery is down to 26%. So, thank you very much for being here. I don't know when I'll be going live again. Um, probably from my daughters. And, um, yeah, I, I should maybe have my yarn by then. I might have gone to Michael's. I'm going on Wednesday. So maybe Wednesday afternoon I can do a live and share all my new yarn with you guys, okay? So thank you very much for being here, everybody. And I'm going to say goodbye and take care and happy crocheting. And uh, thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it.